All right, girls, and do we have a boy? Um, because no, I think not. Oh, Hamad is here. Okay, I don't understand why boys are reluctant to take classes. Beta, you need to have some attendance in order to pass, in order to sit in the exam, not even pass. Anyways, I think all girls will graduate and boys will stay back, right? Okay. Now, we, have, we are going to talk about general anesthesia, right? Um, and today we are going to talk about the introduction. And the next lecture, we are going to talk about the mechanism of action of uh, the general anesthetics, right, everybody? And um, in the next lecture, you guys will tell me, uh, because look, if we uh, stop being so fictional, okay? And if we try to be scientific enough, okay? So we can guess at least that what was the drug that was given to this lady who kept on sleeping for so long, right? And uh, uh, we, I, I will ask you all, okay? After explaining you in the next class, the mechanism of action, I will ask you that what do you think which drug was um, administered to this lady? And we will try to think about it, that what kind of a mode of delivery it could be that a lady would keep on sleeping for 25 years, right? Uh, don't expect me to accept that thing that until there was some man uh, and blah, blah stuff, okay? So no, that doesn't work, okay, in real life. So we will be realistic and we will try to think, maybe the guy had some antidote, right? <laughs> okay, all right, guys, when we talk about general anesthetics, okay? So there are two um, uh, huge classes, right? That we talk about, the first one is inhalation and the second one is intravenous, right? When we will talk about inhalation, right? Then again, there are two further subtypes, okay? The first one is in the gaseous form and the other one is in the volatile liquid form, okay? So the one that is in the gaseous form is nitrous oxide and the one with volatile liquid is halothane, okay? And when we talk about intravenous, so, so the huge classes in intravenous are barbiturates, dissociative medicines, and then uh, we have others as well. And then we have opioids, and then we have benzodiazepine, right? I'm sure uh, by looking at the classification, you all must have understood that our target is what? Tell me girls and boys, if there are any. Um, that what do you think, what are we doing to the brain? Are we exciting it or are we depressing it? What are we doing? Yeah, guys, tell me, what are we doing? Are we very good, Anusha? Well done. So what we are doing is that we are basically depressing the brain, right? And when we are depressing the brain enough, so it is called anesthesia in which the sleeping beauty was right wait very good very good tanzila okay so our major object our major target is that we want to depress the brain's activity in order to put the person into deep sleep this much of a deep sleep that even if we will you know um perform a surgical um uh, any kind of surgery on them, they won't wake up. Just imagine that deep surgery, they won't have sensation, okay? So we want to have that level of depressed activity. All right, okay. By the way, in my last lecture, I discussed that there are two types, okay? One is local anesthesia, other one is general anesthesia. Here, I'm talking about general anesthesia. It means that this medic medication would put you in a deep sleep. Okay, uh, for example, I go to dentist and I'm really scared uh, of dentist. I don't know why. So just imagine the dentist is putting injection. Okay, and um, they do it very uh, brutally into the gums. And then um, uh, just imagine 
like afterwards what happens is for example if the guy if, if the dentist has to do root canal of my this part okay let's say lower teeth okay so uh, after some time once um, the dentist would uh, inject me with the anesthetic with the local anesthetic so i would later on not feel my entire this portion of the face all right so uh, uh, this uh, this is how it works so there are two types of anesthetics one is local other one is general right now we are studying general okay all right um, uh, there is this classification and i have attached mnemonics for you if you know better mnemonics you can always have them okay all right so the first one is inhalation which is nitrous oxide that is no okay um and then uh, for volatile liquids it's mnemonic is hydes okay so halothin influrin uh, isoflurin this fluorine uh sevoflurin okay and then in intravenous right we have two categories one is the inducing agent and the other one is slowly acting one um for inducing agent the mnemonic is a stem all right so that is like s for sodium pro, 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 propol and then we have t for thiopentone sodium and then we have e that is etomidate and then we have m we have methoxetone okay and then i'm sure you all must have studied the organic chemistry um, and you must have studied from the book uh, ball right he was my favorite author and it was my favorite book so i just make up the mnemonic of that md ball so this is like md and then b and l okay so benzodiazepine diazepam lorazepam midaz uh, midazolam okay i'm sure you all do know the names of these medicines by now now the thing is what can stop me from administering this drug into anybody okay so the first thing is see it is already causing depression right so the blood pressure would uh, is expected to go very low right so just imagine if a person is already suffering from bradycardia i would be very much um, aware that what can happen and maybe i'm i would be monitoring even more or maybe uh, i would opt for other uh, procedures rather than um, giving general anesthesia right okay second thing respiratory system for example uh, respiratory system depression i hope this background sound sound is not disturbing you all anyways so the thing is wait wait guys okay so if somebody has respiratory system depression okay it means that they are inhaling slowly okay and let's just say that you are administering an inhalant okay and a static that is inhalant so obviously the drug won't diffuse effectively right and maybe the person already has a uh, a certain condition because of which diffusion uh, does not occur properly right maybe the alveoli is not in intact form as they are in the normal human being right and there are so many other conditions all right then is if a person is going through a kidney or renal failure or impairment so obviously the role of kidney is in metabolism and elimination so that would be affected so uh, similarly the uh, the medicine med medication their metabolism and their elimination will also be affected so it can lead to toxicity as well okay then we have a person who is already having a brain condition right and uh, uh, you can say maybe a person is already depressed okay or maybe a person is neurodegenerate has neurodegenerative diseases such as uh, parkinson alzheimer or maybe the person has over excitation that is epilepsy okay so we have to be very careful uh, you will come to know in the later side why epilepsy okay all right then we have pregnancy let's just say a drug is highly soluble okay and it can have a potential teratogenic effect okay so we would be very much careful before administering the anesthesia 
to uh, a pregnant woman, right? Okay. So guys, when we induce anesthesia to somebody, so there are three stages that you should know of, okay? So the first one is induction, then is maintenance, and then is recovery. I'm sure you all are smart enough and you all must have understood already that when we are saying induction, it means that we have started to administer the anesthetic medication and now we are increasing the dosage slowly and gradually so that um, the, uh, the effect will be produced. Once the effect would start to produce, right, surgical anesthesia, uh, that particular condition can uh, will begin where we can perform a surgery. That moment is called maintenance, right? That now the person is into deep sleep, okay? And now we just need to maintain the blood level of anesthetic, right? Afterwards, the surgery has stopped, okay? So now we stop anesthesia. And now the person is into the recovery state that whatever the drug is in their body, that's eliminating. And I tell you, uh, shivering happens sometimes, okay? We will study in mechanism of action and, uh, you know, in deep detail in the other upcoming lecture, okay? All right. Uh, first of all, we talked about stages of general anesthesia. Here, it should be more like depthness of anesthesia, okay? So, when we talk about stage one, so that is, okay, so when we have a stage one, so that is disorientation or altered consciousness. In a stage two, we have excitation. Okay, so that means now the person, now you're understanding why not in epilepsy. Okay, that now the person uh, will exhibit uncontrolled movement, irregular breathing would be there. Okay, so the goal is to move through this stage as quickly as possible. Okay, then in stage three, we can perform anesthesia, uh, we can perform surgery because now the person is into deep sleep, okay? So now it is called surgical anesthesia, okay? So that is light anesthesia, okay? And then uh, loss of blink reflex and uh, loss of uh, sensation, okay? And everything. And if it's too deeply induced, okay? So that can actually uh, produce a collapse. Why collapse? Because it will actually depress medulla. Medulla, part of brain, okay? If you remember, I gave you a hack to memorize function of medulla. That was that think of yourself putting up the medal, okay? And now the organs that would be covered up with medal, okay, they would be controlled by medulla, okay? For example, our heart, our lungs, our esophagus, that is, on top of medal, okay? So that means the medulla oblongata, the, the medulla is actually uh, controlling what? Our heart rate, our uh, breathing, our, our peristalsis, okay? So what happens is that too deep, um, essentially an overdose and represents an aesthetic crisis. This is the stage between respiratory arrest and death due to circulatory collapse, right everybody? Thank you so much, everybody. And I hope you 